The Cry for Justice continues on Fixing the Money Thing. So leadership, as we have said, is vital to where a nation is heading. Righteous government. I'd like to follow a couple more kings today. We'll go back to our text in 2 Chronicles and show you a couple more kings. I want to make another point with these kings. You know, it's interesting to follow these kings, and you'll see a lot of results that you can learn from. In chapter 26 of 2 Chronicles, we find the nation of Judah. Remember, we have two nations, Israel, the ten tribes, and then Judah, the two tribes in the south. And here we find King Uzziah in chapter 26 of 2 Chronicles. And it says there in verse 5 that he sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God gave him what? You know, I think this would be a great slogan for you to write down somewhere in your house. As long as he sought the Lord, he prospered. As long as you seek the Lord, you'll prosper because you'll have wisdom and understanding. Now, if we go on down to verse number 7, it says, God helped him against the Philistines, against his enemies. Even the Ammonites brought him tribute. And uh, he was uh, known, he was famous uh, to the border of Egypt because he became very powerful and very wealthy. Now, here we see that a man who is seeking God had great success. His enemies are at peace with him. They're actually even bringing tribute to him. And we find great prosperity, and he is now famous. And so that's awesome. Verse number 15, his fame spread far and wide, for he was greatly helped until he became powerful. So Uzziah was a successful king in the sense of having trusted God. He had a son named Jotham. We turn the page to chapter 27. We'll find Jotham. Verse number 6, we find these words. Jotham, Jotham grew powerful because, everyone needs to know why, right? Because what reason? He walked steadfastly before the Lord his God. So we see two examples here that as long as he sought the Lord, he prospered. And as long as he walked steadfastly with God, he grew powerful and had great success. Now Jotham was a good king. He had a son who took over named Ahaz. We find he was not a good king. And let's pick up his story in verse number 1 of chapter 28. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. Unlike David, his father, meaning the lineage of David, not his actual father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. Remember the Ahab, the northern king, the, the kings of Israel, the ten tribes, were very wicked. He also made cast idols for worshiping the Baals. He burned sacrifices in, in the valley of Hinnom. And he sacrificed his own sons. He burned up his own sons as an offering to Baal. He followed the detestable ways of the nations the Lord had, what, driven out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burnt incense. There he goes on, and it says, verse 5, Therefore, everyone say the word, therefore. Therefore, the Lord his God handed him over to the king of Aram. His enemies then came against him. He was also given into the hands of the king of Israel who inflicted heavy casualties. We find here in verse number 6 that they lost 120,000 soldiers in one day in a battle. So we have a vast difference here of a picture of two kings who sought the Lord, put him first, had great success. They were at peace with their enemies. They were wealthy. They were, uh, became famous, stability. And we find a difference of a king who decided to rebel against God, and he is now made liable to destruction. Now the point I'm making is, as the king goes, or the laws go, or the government goes, so the people go. Let me say this again. As the laws go, as the king goes, as the governor, the government goes, so go the people. And we find a great impact. As the nation was led this direction, we have 120,000 men and young men who are not going home to their families. Besides that, you follow this on down to verse number 8. The Israelites, the northern kingdom, which was at war with Judah, captured 200,000 wives, sons, and daughters, and carried them back to Israel. This is an this is amazing difference, friend. 
And why would you say that? It says, therefore, God turned him over. See, God had to withdraw his hand. Not that God did it. God had to withdraw his hand from the blessing of this nation. Are you following me? And so as the nation goes, as the government goes, so go the nation and so are the people impacted. And so as we sit here today and we see that 45% of Christians don't vote, they're, they're, we're being deceived, friends, if that's our attitude. Because you, you're, you're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat, right? And uh, where the nation goes, we're going. We can't sit here idly by. Now, Israel sinned, the ten nations of Israel, the northern kingdom, of course. They, their rebellion and their sin allowed them, God allowed them to be captured by Assyria. And those ten tribes are known as the lost tribes. They are still spread across the nations. Judah, 100 years later, due to its sin and rebellion, we read about Manasseh last week and Ammon, his son, remember last week? Uh, so Judah lost the blessing of God and was carried into captivity by Babylon. So don't be deceived if you think America is going to stand if America becomes perverse and corrupt. Right? Amen. World War II, 85 million people lost their lives during World War II. I think most of you know the story. But how did it turn out for Germany? How did it turn out for Japan? How did it turn out with the nations that were uh, un unrighteous and began to kill and pillage and take advantage of these other nations? Well, before World War II in 1920, Berlin was the third largest city in the world. If you see pictures of Berlin, it was an awesome, prosperous city, beautiful architecture, a beautiful city. After World War II, if you see the pictures, you'll see bombed out shells. Berlin is basically rubble. And uh, it was occupied then from 1945 to 1952. The United States, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, and France occupied Germany. In fact, today, we still have 40 military bases in Germany. What happened to Japan? Tokyo was a famous, very large city. If you look at Tokyo after the war, it was burned, completely flattened. It was burned out. And Japan was also occupied after the war from 45 to 52. We currently still have 23 bases in Japan. So these nations were divided. They were, they were destroyed. Their people suffered. Uh, besides what they did to other nations, they suffered horrible losses, which are still affecting them today. They're still being occupied, if you will. And uh, so the, word, the word's going to come to pass. And, you know, talking about occupation, you know, Jesus told us as believers to occupy till he comes. That may give you a little more insight to what he's talking about. You see, the occupying people, armies, are the victors. And they're occupying the territory that they've captured. They're now occupying it. And so we have, through Jesus, we've now occupy. Satan is a defeated foe. You with me? He's defeated. We now occupy the earth realm on behalf of the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus said to occupy. That means enforce the victory that occurred. Enforce the victory that has taken place. So we occupy spiritually in the spiritual realm, amen? But listen, understand this. Galatians 6, 7 says this. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man or a nation or a woman reaps exactly what they sow. You can't mock God, friend. This is a law. It's, it, it'll, it'll happen, all right? You say, well, Pastor Gary, what about the 64 million people people that have been ripped limb from limb in their mother's womb in the United States. Is that not a horrific crime against humanity? I agree that it is. It's a horrific crime against humanity. But here's the problem. That crime has been declared righteous by the government of this country. Let me say it again. That crime has been declared righteous, right, and good by the government of this country. As I said earlier, as the country goes, so go the people. Right? What about the perversion that's happening against the nuclear family, the family that God designed, a male and a female? How is it that the United States has laws that they call righteous, righteous meaning they consider it right and good, that we pervert family as God designed it? So, we have to talk about worldview. 
Because your worldview is how you're going to interpret life, right? Okay. An ungodly person does not have a godly view of life. Would you agree? They don't know. Who on the planet has a godly, righteous view of life? Come on, help me out. Christians, right. Having a proper worldview, Christians are the salt preservation. They are the light. They are there to reach people with the right picture of life, right? Well, Romans chapter 13, Paul talks about law and order. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on wrongdoers. That's a great scripture, but what happens if the laws are all changed and no one's a wrongdoer? Who has been cut out? God. Let me read it again. The one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers don't bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on wrongdoers. But what happens if the laws are changed and no one is a wrongdoer? Who is cut out? God is cut out. God is cut out. A perverse nation cuts God out. There is no right or wrong. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.